with that, let's get started. So acute medication-induced movement disorders. Okay, very important topic. Remember, this is the acute part of it. We're going to talk about the most acute, scariest one called neuroleptic malignant syndrome. It is a life-threatening reaction with exposure to dopamine receptor blocking agents. You have kind of a triad. And the triad is alteration of mental status, elevated temperatures, uh, and rigidity autonomic dysfunction. So I, let me put it into a nice triad. Alteration of mental status, a movement disorder, typically rigidity, and autonomic dysfunction, elevated temperature, blood pressure lability goes with autonomic dysfunction. So that's your triad. Now, not everything fits into the triad. There are many other things as well. So what else could cause it? Well, infections can cause it. Increasing intracranial pressure can cause autonomic dysfunction as well. With toxic metabolic syndrome can do it. Malignant hyperthermia looks very much like this, but the history is different. There's a family history of this. They've come out of anesthesia, other things. Then, of course, cocaine amphetamine intoxication, something we can see very quickly with, with a timely drug screen. And then neuroleptic malignant syndrome. The key point is the exposure to a neuroleptic prior to that, it's specifically a new onset or a dose increase. History makes this diagnosis. We would be looking for a lot of different things. We want the CSF to be normal. Why? Because we want there to be no presence of an infection. The EEG is going to be diffuse, nonspecific. There should be no seizures and with an elevated CK. So it's the, the fastest way to make the diagnosis is the better history of the recent start of neuroleptic malignant syndrome is due to the dopamine receptor blocking agent. Otherwise, it may take a little while. Why do we care about this so much? Mortality is 10%. It's not common, but it should be on everybody's forefront because the mortality is that high. <clears throat> What is the pathophysiology behind it? Well, we talked about this. It is central dopaminergic blockade. It's widespread dopaminergic blockade. So you have hypothalamus affecting the, the temperature issues, the autonomic nervous system gets affected, the basal ganglia with the Parkinsonism or rigidity, and the alteration of mental status with the frontal lobe. So you have multiple pathways. Those dopaminergic projections that occur at the ventral tegmental area, the stridonigral pathway, the hypothalamic pathway are all blocked. If you've had it in the past, you're more likely to have it again. Now we've got to differentiate it from serotonin syndrome, a little bit different. Similar triad to an extent, but there's some overlap with some symptoms. We'll talk about differentiating it. What causes it? Well, the most common cause is the dopamine receptor blocking agent. You may also see it in Parkinson's patients who have suddenly stopped their medications. Why? They got ill. Parkinson's patient goes to the hospital. They're, they're confused. They have an infection. They have a urinary tract infection or they have a GI issue. They can't take pills. Meds get stopped because meds aren't priority at that point. They should be, but they aren't and they go, are going into withdrawal effectively. There's even reports of it being caused with baclofen, even though that's a GABAergic medication, there are reports of it. Again, so again, this is an interesting component of it. You discontinue the dopamine receptor blocking agent. The most important thing is supportive treatment. Typically, these people will be in the ICU. So that'll be the supportive treatment. Benzodiazepines and muscle relaxants. And then, of course, you know, adding a dopaminergic medication in the case of withdrawal. In those withdrawal cases, we actually end up having an NG tube put down and starting some medication. Even if absorption is not there, there should be some medication given to them.